Hello and welcome to this Blackpool Teaching Hospital's Lung Ultrasound video lecture. My name is Simon Hayward and today I'm going to be talking about the Lung Ultrasound Score. So we're going to go through what exactly is the Lung Ultrasound Score, whereabouts you scan on the thorax, how you put the score together and some information about how it can be used in the clinical setting. So the lung ultrasound score is basically a measure of the state of aeration of the lungs. So the majority of the time the lungs have about 98% air. So if you have normal lung sliding and then you see A lines that is a good indication that you have normally aerated lungs. If however you have an absence of lung sliding and confirmed pneumothorax, then for that section of the lung, you in effect have close to 100% air. And then as we head down the scale, you get less and less aeration of the lungs and more and more density as either air is removed or fluid starts to infiltrate into the lungs. So you start to get significant V lines through to confluent V lines, through to a full consolidation, which could be pneumonic or potentially atelectasis, and then down to a pleural effusion where all of the air has basically been removed from the lung tissue. So lung ultrasound is a regional measure of lung aeration. You scan different zones on the thorax and you attribute a score to each area. It's a semi-quantitative outcome measure, so you can use it to track changes in the lung aeration through the score process itself. So whereabouts do you scan? You scan six zones per hemithorax, so 12 for the whole thorax itself. The first two are anteriorly, very similar to the blue points that are taught in FUSIC and advocated by Daniel Lichtenstein. You then have two zones in the axilla, in the mid-axillary line, and then two zones posteriorly for each side. So six zones per side, 12 zones in total. And how do you score? Normal aerated lung, so lung sliding with A lines or non-significant B lines, scores a zero. If you have significant B lines, which is three or more, it scores a one. Confluent B lines, scores a two. And then any other pathology within that zone, like a consolidation, pleural effusion, or pneumothorax scores a three. So you have 12 zones in total. Each can score naught to three. So there is a potential, and I say potential, maximum score of 36. So how can it be used? So some of this, these examples, there is literature out there. So you can use it to monitor the re after antibiotics. So antibiotics are initiated for chest infection and then the effects of those antibiotics as they begin to work can be used to monitor a consolidation across the 12 zones as it starts to improve, resolve and hopefully begin to become normal aerated lung tissue again. You can monitor the reaeration after prone positioning or any positional changes for that matter. So again, you might have a basal zone in a supine position that scores a three, change the position into prone or side lying, or begin to sit the patient more upright or mobilize, depending on the clinical picture. And you might see an improvement of that consolidated area as it begins to go from a scoring a three to a two to a one, and hopefully back to a normal zero. Reoration 
after pleural effusion drainage. So you can get removal of the pleural effusion, that pressure on the lung is released, and again, you can track the change over a period of either hours or days as that effusion or any other pleural pathology starts to resolve with an associated improvement in the lung aeration. Reaeration after removal of extravascular lung water. So if the patient is overloaded and they have an excess amount of fluid that is located in the lung tissue itself, you can again score those lung zones and watch as perhaps things like hemodialysis, filtration or diuretics have a positive effect on the aeration of the lung. A few more examples. Monitor peri and postoperative atelectasis. So after the effects of a general anaesthetic, the lung tissue can be compromised and be partially aerated or begin to have certain areas of collapse. This can be monitored again with lung ultrasound score as you instigate therapeutic strategies to try and resolve the atelectic process. Through recruitment strategies and manoeuvres that will hopefully maintain and improve the aeration and expansion of the lung tissue itself. It can also be used to monitor a deterioration. So you can monitor the score. The higher the score, the worse the lung aeration. So if that score starts to creep up over a period of time, then you can mul monitor multiple pathologies as that lung tissue potentially deteriorates. One of those examples could be ventilator acquired pneumonia, but there's absolutely no reason why it couldn't be uh, hospital acquired pneumonia or any other directional changes in a worsening direction or any other pathological processes. And also to monitor the optimum time for liberation from things like mechanical ventilation and extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. So the next slide has an example of this. So this is some work that was performed by Sumer et al. And they did a study where they looked at the lung ultrasound score and trying to predict post-extubation distress in their patients. So they found that if a patient had a score on their lung of less than 13, then they had a lower chance of being of experiencing post extubation distress after that extubation. Between a score, lung ultrasound score of 13 and 17 was of no real prognostic value in this particular study. But they did find that if they had a score of greater than 17 out of 36, which is the maximum, so 17 out of 36, then you can see that they actually had quite a high chance of experiencing post extubation distress where they one of the consequences could be a potential reintubation so in summary lung ultrasound score is a semi quantitative measure of lung aeration you perform the scan across 12 zones six each hemithorax. Each zone is scanned from naught being normal to three, which is being some significant pathology. And it can be used to track improvements in lung aeration quality in response to interventional changes or monitoring the deterioration in the lung condition as a pathology evolves and develops. Thank you for listening and please do check out the other ultrasound videos. Thank you.